as the leader of a company, what does philanthropy mean to you? I first found out about philanthropy when I was in the fourth grade. I lived in a very, very poor neighborhood slum, and they took us to, uh, I think the Shriners took us to uh, the Ringling Brothers Circus, and they took all of our pictures in front of the school bus. And the next day or two, it came out in the paper, indigent, indigent children taken on field trip. <laughs> and I thought, you know, it's a great, you know, I don't think it now, I mean then, but now I think, what a great idea to do this for kids, but why do you want to let them know they're poor? Because until then, we really didn't know that we were that poor. So my idea with kids is, you know, we live in a very affluent area. So they've got, most of the kids have everything but not always have they been taught to dream. And my gift to them, if I can do it successfully, is teaching them how to dream. A lot of times all they know how to do is spend their parents' money. And that's not really a, a good life skill. So if you can teach them how to dream, teach them how to work hard, go get it, that's my idea of philanthropy. It's not always giving money, but giving your time. That's more valuable. How do you instill that in uh, a company or a company culture or a group of people so that they can start to understand how important that is for the next generation coming up? I think it's important that they know what's instilled deeply in you. And everybody in my company knows my background. Mm -hmm. And in a way they know it better than I do because they talk to my mother who is 77 years old that retired when she was 73 and we bought our home up here and made her come here. And she worked for a dollar a minimum wage and on the assembly line. So everybody kind of knows my story. And, you know, my story was something I was always ashamed of when I was little. But it has done me so much good now. Because where I live, you dealt with confrontation every day. In business, you deal with confrontation every day. You just don't get to use your fist as much now. <laughs> so, you know, my, my thing is to teach everybody that we're lucky. You know, it's because there's a lot of people who work a lot harder than I do. And most of the people at our company, even though we all work hard, we've got to have a little luck in it too. And if we don't realize that, we can't give a little of that back. It's not a very good society, and I think we've got some, we've got people that give. I mean, the articles that you all had on me aren't articles I've written. I couldn't write anything that nice about myself. I could, you know, <laughs> and there's a whole lot of other people that wouldn't write anything that nice about me. But my time with my, with my kids, the kids in the community, either the community I live in, the community my company's in, the community that my kids go to school in, community of our employees kids we try to spend time with those we cannot always provide everything to everyone but we can provide some jobs provide some vision and teach them how to dream a little bit because you know when they walk in and they see my Ford GT sitting there the little supercar or as one rich kid in New Albany called it poor man's Ferrari you know <clears throat> they see that sitting there and they think you know this guy really came from nothing and he's got all this and did all this and you know it says that you can do it no matter who you are in our country you can do anything and that, I think that's more than I can give than anything because there's a lot of people with a whole lot more money and there's people that got a whole lot of bigger companies. But there's very few that can compete with us on how we feel about giving to kids and giving of our time. And that's what's important.